Previously, I've inquired about how we determine the order of genes on a chromosome by genetic mapping. We've discussed briefly the idea that genetic distancers are additive. So if you know the distance between genes A and B and genes B and C, for example, if you know that gene A and gene C are, say, 30 centimorgans apart, and you know that genes B and C are 10 centimorgans apart, the additivity property of genetic distances means that we know that the distance between A and B is 30 minus 10, or 20 centimorgans. The way that we calculate the genetic distances between all three sets of genes at the same time, that is the distance from A to B, the distance from B to C, and the distance from A to C, all at once, is using three-point mapping, A, B, C. Here's how it starts. We have a P0 generation where, and this is going to assume that these three genes are on the same chromosome, although we don't always know that to start. We need to create that F1, in this case because we're looking at three loci, we need to create an F1 trihybrid. So we usually will do that by starting with a parent with a genotype homozygous for one allele, the one alleles at three genes, A, B, and C, and crossing that with an individual that's got the two alleles of all of those genes. And so we know that the P0 gamete haplotypes are going to be guaranteed A1, B1, C1 from this parent, and A2, B2, C2 for the other parent. Remember, these now are the parental type haplotypes. A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. That creates an F1 trihybrid that gets the A1, B1, C1 haplotype from one parent and the twos from the other parent. And just like we looked at at simple two-point mapping in one of the previous videos, the idea here is that we're going to cross this F1 individual with a tester. And in this case, we're just going to say that's an individual who, like this first parent, was homozygous for all of the one alleles. And that's going to generate an F2 generation. And there are eight different genotypes, because we've got two different genotypes at three different loci. So there's A1 and A2, gene A, and so forth. So 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the third, are eight different combinations of those genotypes in the F2 generation. And the question is, what were the haplotypes of the F1 individual in the gametes? That's the question. When we figure that out, we'll know how many recombinant types and how many parental types the F1 trihybrid produced. That's the goal. So we have to do something tricky to infer or to guess, it's not a guess, educated guess, what those gamete haplotypes are. And that's why we look at the F2 genotypes. For the F2 genotypes, every single individual, just like in two-point mapping, will get one of their haplotypes from the tester parent. So there will be an A1, B1, C1 allele. And remember I said there are eight different possible combinations, recombinant combinations of alleles that come out of that parent. So I'm going to draw this eight different times. And then we have to figure out what's going to happen at this other locus. So we've got A1s, and we've got A2s. So half of the gametes will have A1 and half will have A2. Now if you get an A1, you can either get B1 or you can get B2. So 50% of the gametes that have A1 get B1 and B2. And the same is true for the A2s. 
Remember, these are all the possible combinations. This is if Mendel's second law independent assortment was happening when you're looking at three different genes. So if these three genes were on three different chromosomes, you'd get eight different combinations of genotypes. And you'd expect to see even numbers, a one to 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 one, to one ratio. That's probably not what we're going to see here. Now, if you get A1 and B1, there are now, finally, two more options. You either get C1 or you get C2. So those are the eight different combinations of haplotypes that you could get if independent assortment is occurring out of this F1 individual. Thank goodness for video because I, upon instant replay, I just realized that those should have been B2s. So now we should have gametes, half of them have A1, half have A2, half have B1, half have B2, half have C1, and half have C2. And that obeys Mendel's second law. Okay. So the geneticist in the laboratory doing this would cross the P0 individuals together to make the F1 trihybrid, cross to the tester, and create this set of F2 individuals. And of course, at first, we don't know who's got which genotypes. So you have to collect a number of F2 offspring, identify their genotypes, DNA sequencing or other technologies, and then we can catalog how many of these different types do we have. So here are my made up numbers. For this genotype, let's say we observed, that's number of observations, O. We have 349 with that genotype. 128 of those. All right. So we've collected a total of 1,200 different F2 individuals. Just like single point mapping now, we need to figure out which of these eight different genotypes are parental types and which are recombinant types. The first thing, as in two-point mapping, we know that an A1B1C1 came from the tester parent. They are not a parent we care about the haplotypes of. It's this parent. It's the trihybrid. We want to know its gamete haplotypes. So if we know these genotypes, we can get rid of 1A1, 1B1, and 1C1 allele because we know that those came from that parent. What's left are the haplotypes of the gametes created by the F1 individual after meiosis and crossing over that created these 1,200 F2 individuals. Now, it should be pretty obvious that there are a couple of classes of F2 genotype that contain parental. The, so A1B1C1 is a parental type. So we know that's parental. A2B2C2, down here at the bottom, is also a parental type. And it shouldn't be surprising, it's not surprising to a geneticist, that the parental types are the types that usually have the largest number of offspring with that particular haplotype. The rest of these are some sort of recombinant. Here's the trick. We're doing three-point mapping right now, which means we're going to calculate the distance from A to B, B to C, and A to C all at the same time. So what we want to do is not just ask, is this a recombinant type or not, because we know this is, but A1B1C2 is not a gamete that was produced by either of the parents. But A1B1 is a parental type gamete combination. So to do three-point mapping, where we calculate three different genetic distances at once, we have three different comparisons of each haplotype to make to the parental gametes. We want to know, is AB parental or recombinant? Is BC parental or recombinant? And is A to C? So here's how this works. Here's a gamete that came out of the F1 dihybrid. We know it's parental. A1 was with B1 in the parent. A1 was with C1 in the parent. And B1 was with C1 in the parent. So those are all three intervals 
genetic interval A to B, B to C, and A to C were all parental combinations. So we're just looking at pairwise combinations. The same is true down here. A2 with B2, A2 with C2, and B2 with C2. So all three of those pairwise intervals, two locus genetic intervals, are parental types. Here's where things get interesting. A1 with B1 is a parental combination. But B1 with C2 is recombinant. B1 was never with C2 in the parental generation. Neither was A1 and C2. So when we see an individual that has this combination of alleles, it's partly recombinant and partly not. So we know recombination happened because of that C2 allele in its combination with A1 and B1. Likewise, A1 and C1 here are a parental type, but we've got two different recombinant intervals. So here B2C2 is parental. Here the combination of B1 and C1 is parental. Here the combination of A and C is parental. And all of the rest of these categories are recombinant. So now we're ready to calculate the genetic distance between A and B, B and C, and A and C separately. And all we need to do is combine the numbers of recombinants just like we looked at before. We want to sum the number of recombinant gametes from A to B. So that would be 5 plus 114 plus 116 plus 4, which if my math is correct is 239 recombinants. And we've got 128 recombinants between B and C, plus 5, plus 4, plus, there's another recombinant type in there, isn't there? Where's the other BC recombinant? Recombinant, recombinant, recombinant. Oh, I never filled in this line, did I? Huh. Yes. So, more practice. A with B is a parental type. A with C is recombinant, and B with C is recombinant. There we go. So now we have four different recombinant types from B to C. So we sum 128, 5, 4, and 124, and we get 482 recombinants. And then we take 128, 114, 116, and 124, and sum those together and we get 261 recombinants. So now we're at the point where we can calculate genetic distance. The A to B distance is the number of recombinants, 239, number of recombinant gametes, or haplotypes, divided by the total number of haplotypes. And so that's 239 divided by 1,200 which is about 19.92 according to my calculations. Likewise, so that's A to B. B to C, we have 482 over 1,200, which is about 40.16, and again, I've changed these, you might have already noticed, from fractions to centimorgans. So I've multiplied these fractions by 100 to arrive at centimorgans, or map units, as you know. And then finally, the A to C distance. And this is what's going to tell us the relative order of genes on the chromosome. 20 units apart, A to B, about 40 map units, or centimorgans, from B to C. So the A to C distance is going to tell us the order of those three genes. 261 over 1,200 is 21.75 centimorgans. So when you come to class next time, draw a map that relates the relative order of positions A, B, and C, genes A, B, and C, on a chromosome and see if it's true that the genetic distances between them are additive and obey this rule.